Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Ishin EV300D FED goggles which I've been testing for the last couple of weeks. In this video I'm going to quickly go over their features and specs, measure their latency and most important try to help you decide whether you should get them or not. In terms of packaging, inside the box you can find the Ishin EV300D goggles which are available either in white or black, a very durable high quality carrying case, an Ishin branded cleaning cloth, the user manual, a battery case which is designed to accommodate two 18650 battery cells which are not included, two third party receivers model covers, two head straps, and a piece of foam which will enable you to protect the lens from getting scratched. In terms of specs, these goggles feature two 4x3 LCS panels that have a resolution of 1280 by 960. The field of view is 42 degrees. The built-in DVR supports up to 64GB microSD cards and record videos at a resolution of 720x576 or 720x480 at 30 frames per second. The IPD is adjustable between 56 to 72 mm The focal length is adjustable, so in case you are far or short-sighted, instead of using diopters, you can also try this option and set the focal length between 300 all the way down to minus 800 degrees. In case you have a custom prescription and you still need to use the opters, these inserts are included and using this chart which can be found inside the user manual, you'll be able to take them to your optician and get them custom fitted according to your prescription. The goggles are bundled with two diversity receivers that work together in order to create a quadversity model. You will still be able to use other Fetcher compatible receivers such as the Immersion RC Rapid Fire, but then you will lose the quadversity functionality and you will need to use a single model. You should pay attention that in order for the quadversity functionality to properly work, the letter inside the model bay needs to match the same letter on the receiving model. In addition, the working voltage of the goggles is between 7.4 to 28 volts, so you can power them using LiPo batteries between 2 to 6 cells. The firmware of the goggles is upgradable using this micro USB port, which will also enable you to power them up using a power bank. Next to it you can find a headphone jack. And on the right side, a mini HDMI port, which will enable you to connect the goggles to your computer in order to get some simulator training, and an AV in and out port. On the bottom and top side of the goggles, you can find pretty big ventilation holes for the built-in fan, which can be turned on or off by short pressing the goggles power button. Next to the power button, you can find a 5-way joystick that controls the functionality of the DVR. On the other side, you can find another 5-way joystick that will enable you to change between the different modes and also set up the goggles. And finally, over here, you can find these up and down arrows that will enable you to change between the different frequencies. Without the receiving models and the battery, the weight of the Ishin EV300D is 274.1 grams, so they are heavier than the Fetchlock HDO2, and also from the Skyzone Sky030, which does include, of course, the built-in diversity receiver. Including the dual diversity models, the weight of the Ishin EV300D is 320 grams, and after adding the battery case along with two 18650 cells, it brings us to a total weight of 463.6 grams. So these goggles are not very light, and that's probably the reason Ishin also included this top strap, which will help to spread the weight more evenly on your head. Another option that you should consider is getting this extension cable and then just place the battery next to you in order to reduce some weight. Unfortunately, due to the nature of LCOS screens, it's going to be extremely hard for me to capture the internal screens using my GoPro camera in order to show the quality and go through the settings. What I can tell you however is that Ishin have done a great job designing the user interface and setting up the Google is quite simple. In case you are not aware, there is a major debate regarding the latency of the goggles, since some users reported that they experienced a very noticeable delay, which makes these goggles unusable for FPV. In order to test it out, I connected the Runcam Racer 3, which has a very low latency, to the video in of the goggles, and I also tested the internal receiver when it was connected to a VTX. After testing it out using a GoPro camera that was recording the internal screens at 240 frames per second, I can tell you that according to my test, the latency is very low on both cases, and it's only about 50 milliseconds. I'm not saying that the other users were wrong, and I know that Penless 360 has done a similar test and got to the conclusion that the latency is about 100 milliseconds. 
My point is that you should be aware of this issue and you should also be aware that there might be some inconsistencies between the same goggles due to a poor quality control. In addition, when using these goggles, I didn't experience any latency issue at all, and I do hope that if you already have these goggles and you do experience one, it will be solved using a future firmware update. In order to compare the field of view of the EV300D with the Sky Zero 30 and the Fetchlock HD02, which you can now see on the screen, I did use my GoPro camera. Now you can see the screens of the EV300D, and as you can see, the field of view of the EV300D is about 15% smaller than the field of view of the Fetchlock HD02. Now I overlaid the screen of the Sky Zero 30, which is about 5% smaller than the screen of the EV300D. Before sharing with you my conclusions after using these goggles for the last couple of weeks, it's very important for me to stress out that using goggles is a very personal experience, and I think that it's best if you can use the goggles before you buy them, although I know that on many cases it's not possible. So just keep in mind that different people have different faces and also different eyes, and I'm only talking out of my own personal experience. In terms of ergonomics, I can tell you that these goggles are very comfortable to use. I didn't experience any light leakage at all, and in case your face are wider than mine, you can simply remove the two pieces of foam which are located on the sides. Regarding the quadversity feature, I can tell you that it works pretty well, However, it's not a major improvement over a standard diversity receiver, and I think that on their next version, Ishin should just ditch this option, because it can be a little bit cumbersome to use for antennas, and I think that it could have been better if they used a single model and improved the quality of the screens. As for the quality of the current ones, they are quite okay, but personally, I'm not a big fan of LCOS screens, and if I compare it to the OLED screens which are used by the HD02 and by the Sky Zero 30, the LCOS panels are much inferior. Of course, they are cheaper, but again, I hope that Ishin can ditch next time the quadversity feature, save some money, and then use OLED panels. In addition, as a nearsighted person, I had some issues adjusting the focal length to meet my needs, and it's also very annoying that the knobs cannot be locked as every time you're going to put back the goggles into the case, the focal length values are very likely to be changed. So personally, the focal length adjustment of the Fetchlock HD02 works much better. Finally, the last issue that I encountered is that, at least for me, it was pretty hard to see clearly the entire screens, even though the field of view is not that big, and the edges of the screens seem a little bit blurry. So overall, as you probably understand, the Ishin EV300D are far from perfect, however, if you take into consideration their price, they might provide you with a good value for money. The reason I'm saying might and not will is because sometimes you can get the EV300D on sale, and I think that the lowest price that I've seen them go for is $265, which is a pretty good price considering their features. However, the list price is $320, and for that price, I recommend to add the extra $80 and get the SkyZone Sky Zero 30. And if you can extend the budget a little bit further, I actually recommend to go with the Fetchlock HD02, which I'm really impressed with. Currently, you can get them for $425 after applying a coupon code, which I'm going to include in the description box of this video. This price is not going to include, of course, a video receiver. However, you don't have to buy the most expensive one. And for a start, you can get the Ishin Pro 58, which will cost you $30 and will provide you with an extremely good value for money. So that's going to be it for my review of the Ishin EV300D. I hope it was informative enough, and I am going to do some further tests and include some DVR footage and side-by-side -side comparison with other receivers. As always, I would like to thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos, and goodbye.